is up here. It's coming back up. It's going under. Go oh, Arizona. Max thinks he's seen something in the water. But then it's gone. I was looking at the flag and I was wondering, is there actually a person behind there? <laughs> Whatever's there is obscured from view by the flag. The flag is in the middle. 500 metres to the north, <laughs> Chapo has a clear view. Yeah, go ahead. And then all of a sudden, the guy popped out from behind the flag, and I was like, wow, we really need to get this guy. It's unclear how long the man has been struggling against the rip. The man bounces off the bottom. He's up here. He's coming back up. He's going under. Oh, Arizona. As precious seconds tick away, the man barely has enough energy to keep his head up. Yeah, 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 you got him. But that's when I'd noticed that closer in, there was another guy who was just in the same amount of trouble. Another man has drifted into exactly the same spot. But from the tower, he's also hidden by the flag. Mario is unaware Harrison has a double rescue on his hands and needs backup. I turned the board around and I tried to catch a wave in, but on the angle, so I could pass him and, and collect him on the way through. In my head, it, I thought it would go to plan. It didn't go to plan. Chapo races to back up from the other end of the beach. To me, they look like they're in a lot of trouble. Chapo and someone else. Overshooting the second patient poses a new dilemma to Harrison. Who to help next? I told the first guy to just don't let go. Really dangerous to go out and try and rescue someone with no equipment because they're going to see you afloat and they're just going to jump all over you. They don't care if they take you down with them. Chapo battles the waves. In a panic, the man pushes Harrison underwater. In that situation, Harrison was well in control of what he was doing. We just needed my help to do it more effectively. Veteran lifeguard Chapo is joined by first year lifeguard Sam. If that's an absolute survival stroke at its finest, they were panicking, trying to get in, unable to get in. That's just like fighting. We're in for sure. Go for the right-hand side. I'll go the left-hand side, OK? Where's the board? With only one board on the buggy, Chapo must drop Sam off. You go first, I'll go get a board. Then go for another board. A surfer sees the trouble unfolding. A surfer came along and floated one of the girls, so I thought, oh, thank goodness, she's out of trouble. Sam can get the other girl now. Yeah, that one girl's horrific. And Sam paddled past the girl in dire straits. And went for the girl that was already being floated by the surfer. What are you doing? Even though she was being held up by a surfer, she was unresponsive. All right, if we're going to get her legs, on the floor, we're going to down She's taken on a lot of water, and yeah, I wasn't getting much response at all. Hey, you there? You there? 
100 metres up the beach, Chapo has collected a second rescue board. Sam's grab one girl butt. Quickly go. Yeah, I'm on my right. I've got a good visual on right now. She's struggling. Just hold up. The woman must hang on for just a few seconds more. Hold on, sweetie. Hold up. Friends from Western Sydney, Claudia and Alicia are now with lifeguards. But their condition is poor. OK, we're going to have to break this boat. Lots of waves coming. She was not really moving at all. I just wanted to kind of keep her close and just keep telling her it's going to be OK. She had taken in a lot of water, so sort of the next five to ten minutes were just pretty critical. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to give you some oxygen. Put the oxygen mask on her and just try and keep her calm. Yeah, there, good girl. Seems like you've come around all right. I don't think an ambulance No, I don't think yeah, so either. Think the situation becomes clearer to Jules. That was, um, yeah, really well done. The fact that Sam went for the girl that was being floated by the surfer in the tower, that confused me, but... Sam was right there and then, and he did the right thing. Yeah, just these sort of in front of me here. Guys, just push back between those red and yellow flags for me, please. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, A lifeless swimmer is being dragged from the water by members of the public. Straight away, I'm preparing for resus. Defibrillators are used to resuscitate people by sending an electrical charge to the heart. Where are they? I know they are. I was there. I was at the back. By a bit unconscious, do you mean he is unconscious or he's just fading in and out? This guy had a bit of water coming out of his mouth. His eyes were closed and he was unconscious. Lifeguards quickly assessed the man to see if CPR is necessary. He did have a pulse and he was only just breathing by himself. So with the bag mask, we are giving him 100% oxygen. The man was pulled from the water between the flags. Can we bring that back over? The flags are normally the safest part of the beach. Is there anything that you know about? No. Oh, no. we like, didn't see this. What caused the man's near-death experience? Yeah, this is my whole when the guy started coming around, we found out that he had actually got really bad cramp in his legs and he, and he just couldn't even swim. He just went under. Acker is from Western Sydney and was swimming with friends. We were out swimming, probably about close to 100 metres out. Just got a leg cramp and just started panicking and had to pull him back in shore. Even in the flags, you know, which is up there with the safest swimming areas, you know, things do happen. I think Acker owes a lot to his mates for pulling him out that day. I think Acker was a lucky man. Spotting a man in the danger zone, Bagus tasks young Sam with the job. Thanks, big Sam is in here, boy. Okay, Foppy, where are you? Where are you going to the south corner? In the deep south. The deep south. Yeah, I gotcha. Hard to see from here. 
Yeah, go, boys. Give Sam an express ticket over 100 metres out to the man. Yeah, he's he's going out really well there, huh? Far out. It's a good rescue. Getting back in won't be so easy. And you're in a strong rip. You got rocks, big wall, big waves. So it's a tricky, tricky spot to do a rescue. Hey, baby, how's it going? Dutch tourist Stefan never expected this when he went for a swim at Bondi. Yeah, you can see it was dangerous, and for someone who's never been there, it's pretty scary. Get on the floor, get on the floor, get on. Suddenly, a huge set wave runs up. Within seconds, Sam and his patient are ricocheted from the deep water of the river into the shallow water alongside Bondi Iceberg's pool. He's getting smashed by waves, I'm getting smashed by waves. We're getting nice and close to the rocks. I'm thinking, yeah, this is going to be a hairy one. The rip's kind of taking you away from the beach, closer to the rocks. So you have to make a decision whether to paddle out and around or a really long paddle back to the sand, or sometimes you have to take on the rocks and go up the rocks with the patient. Never before has a first year lifeguard chosen to go up the rocks. Go up the rocks, huh? Well, pretty much from the paddle out, I knew the rip was just insane. And I was either we paddle against the rip for 15 minutes, or we just take our chances, give it a go, and go straight up those rocks. And I thought, why not? Better now than never. The rocks kind of opened up, and we just slotted it straight in there. It was unreal. <laughs> yeah, that was good. He got out there quick. It's definitely not what I'd expect a young guy to do at all. Um, Any time you're dealing with rocks, it can be really dangerous if you don't have the right technique. Yeah. Marks out of 10. We're never going to give them a 10 straight up. We'll give him a 7. All right, mate, see you later. All good, enjoy your day. Clint Kimmins has seven years lifeguarding experience on the Gold Coast but is in his first season at Australia's busiest beach. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's panicking. He's definitely no good. Trainee Berkey is also at the south end. He's on a roster day off, but working as a buggy driver for the Bondi Rescue film crew. And even on my day off, I was still watching the water. I knew something was going to go on down here. It's just starting to open up now. That tide's really starting to drop. Suddenly, five more swimmers lose their footing on the sandbank. There's a few others out there now. I'm going to go. Just one. Copy, mate. We'll keep eyes on you. Five or six more people just lost their feet and started to panic. Oi! Oi! Go in! Go in! There are now six swimmers in trouble and only one lifeguard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, central to Jethro. Backup is 800 metres away at the north end. Mate, there's a few more heads down there. It might even be worth just heading down that way, mate. Usually the horn's really useful to clear a path, but on this day, the, uh, the horn wasn't working. I was looking at other people in trouble thinking, geez, we need a few more lifeguards out here. Hey, buddy, oi, oi! Oi, swim, swim to me, swim to me. The man further in struggles to stay afloat. Trainee lifeguard Berkey is off duty and faced with a decision. Mate, that guy was properly drowning. I knew I had to go. As the rip intensifies, yet more swimmers are sucked out. Yeah, central to north Rhino. There's about five heads now, so. Worth going in when you get there. Three out of the water. Jethro finally arrives with first year Bondi lifeguard Jack. Reedy, Berkey, and a volunteer lifesaver manage five patients. 
two more swimmers cling to a small bodyboard. Jack heads for the two swimmers who are waving. When Jules identifies yet another person in trouble. There's a chick close to shore who's like practically wait, drowning. Wait, 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 wait. You can't ignore when people are in distress. PA Jack and tell him to turn around and go for the chick into his right. She's the priority. There's now only one lifeguard left on the entire beach. By the time I grabbed the megaphone, Jack had gone past it. I just had to get in there. Jethro's going in. People drown in a minute. You think they're sweet and they just sink, so you can't really leave that up to chance. Escalate it quickly. Right. you OK? This is my fifth summer on the beach. You know, it's time for me to really step up. We've got a lot of new, inexperienced lifeguards, and, you know, that puts me in a position to be someone to look up to. No more swimming in the south corner.